So, how's everybody doing? In your days in general, how's the break? I'm not gonna, let's not dive right into questions. It's okay. like, how's the break? Yeah, right? I had 18 days to catch up on work. I caught up on everything yesterday. Me too. Yeah. I realized I have a midterm, Saturday. I like it. I was just chilling and I was with my friends. Like, you? So no specific questions before we dive into it. Okay. The whole chapter is about carboxylic acids. What are carboxylic acids? This. COOH. The whole chapter looks at how the hell do we synthesize them, and then once we synthesize them, what the hell can we do with them? That's the whole chapter. Okay? These are the derivatives that you look at throughout the entire chapter. Your acid chloride, acid, all it is is it, it's you're just changing this group over here. Okay? And these groups you've seen before in previous chapters and in organic form. I'm not going to cover naming, that's, that's all you. Okay? Uh, this discusses reactivity, okay? But what's more important is this. Um, I'm going to go by and try to remember questions that Dr. Ahmed asked, questions that other students asked when they were tutoring, uh, when I was tutoring them. Uh, this question came in our exam when I took it, and it was asking about the relative acidity. When we talk about acidity, what are we referring to? Remember, carboxylic acids have an acidic hydrogen here, correct? So, all you're asked to do with this question is to order the compounds in order of which one is the most acidic, which one is the least acidic. How am I going to know this? By looking at the R group. Because remember, the acid looks like this, right? So the nature of this R group over here is going to influence how acidic this hydrogen is. For example, if you have a group that pulls electrons away very strongly, you make this hydrogen more acidic, right? Because if you're pulling electrons away, that hydrogen is just about ready to leave. That's the definition of an acid, remember people. So in this example, and the one he gave us in our exam was very similar to this. He just basically told us, he's like, you're given the following carboxylic acids. The only difference is that you have chlorine being moved at different positions along the carbon chain. We know that chlorine is a what? Chlorine is a halogen, okay? but pulls electrons. So, let's do some thinking here. If we have a group that's closer to our hydrogen, it's pulling more electrons away, right? And if it's further away, it's pulling less. So, based on that, can you infer what is going to be the most acidic and least acidic? Just based on where we're gonna put the chlorine. It's gonna be simple. If the one that's closest, the chlorine atom that is closest to our carboxylic it's acid, is the most acidic and the one that's furthest away is the least acidic that's it very simple very straightforward so the figures most... the question where it's like chlorine chlorine and then like a something else like if it's not all the same like you know what i mean like it's not all halogens like it's different or... oh that's organic one you won't ask like you mean like if he gives me like CL, CL, CL and, then and then one of these is like I, and then here it's going to be like BR. And yeah, but no, these are all halogens. Yeah, but again, the nature of the halogen also matters. Because as you move down the periodic table, electronegativity yeah. decreases. That's organic one, this is organic two. He's here to test you about your ability to memorize um, reactions and then apply them when you go to solve uh, those like fill in the blank questions he gives you. Any questions online? Uh, I can't hear if the if you're saying anything. If you at any point have any questions, so just I don't know. Message on the group. I have my phone next to me, so we'll probably hear the WhatsApp notification go off uh, in case you have any questions. Okay. Synthesis. How do we synthesize carboxylic acids? This is the beauty of this chapter. Reactions are recycled from every other chapter that we've looked at in the past. Where have we seen this before? What is this called? Grignard's reagent. Grignard's reagent, we've seen this in that big scary diagram that he gives you in chapter um, 15. Chapter 15. You'll see, I'll label these for you. This is chapter 15. This reaction here, 
You've seen this in chapter, you're going to see this in this chapter, and you see this in chapter uh, chapter 12, 12 and 15, I think so. Uh, this one, chapter 12. Uh, the only difference, for example, the only difference between this and this reaction is here you're starting with a primary alcohol and you're converting it to what? Carboxylic acid. Here you're starting with any R group. Any R group. Any R group. I need to emphasize that. Any R group using the same reagents, K metal force, so potassium permanganate, OH minus, P, then H3O plus, you form your carboxylic acid. Uh, I'm not sure how many of these are actually in the reagent sheet he gives you, but again, this stuff recycles, uh, is repeated from previous chapters. Um, ah, okay, for example, in your last midterm, remind me, where have we seen, where have we seen these? What reaction is this called? Hello. Close, but the type of reaction. When we when we're starting with what? What is this compound called? This is a methyl. No. There's only one that you covered in the last chapter. Methyl ketone, two, salt of acid, haloform test. This is the haloform test. Haloform test. This is a good way of remembering, uh, of remembering this. But the last step of the haloform test produces what? A salt of acid which looks like this, remember? Double bond O, O minus, and A plus. All you're doing is you're adding H3O plus, which is going to do what? It's going to remove the Na and add H. That's a good way of remembering it, okay? Uh, similarly, uh, this is an aldehyde. Two carboxylic acid, you've seen this in chapter 12. It repeats itself. This reaction here, I think, is new. Yes, this is new, and this is important. He asked us a mechanism in our uh, exam. Nitrile, two carboxylic acid. I'm not gonna rewrite that. Okay, carboxylic acid. Ah, again, repeating itself. What group is this? It's an aldehyde, okay? And what are the reagents? Where have we seen these guys before? Oh, the last chapter. What is it called? What's the reaction called? Come on. I just know it's called aldehyde too. Okay, okay. It's the silver mirror, Tollens test. Tollens test. Tollens test, exactly. Again, the last step with Tollens is you produce a salt of acid, like we saw in the previous one, except in this variation, we're adding H plus to add the OH, to form the OH, to get rid of the uh, salt of acid, right? Balance test. Perfect. He said that in the lecture, what? And it's like 10 or 11 will 100% be in the exam. It's like 10 or 11. Is that the final? Oh, for you to fill. Okay. So people take note of this. So my name is saying that it's like 10 or 11 is 100% coming in your exam. 10 or 11. Okay. Oh, like the ones you just Yeah, the ones that we just covered. But as you saw, the. The things repeat themselves. Yeah. So, okay, now we're looking at producing carboxylic acids from alkenes and alkynes. Alkenes and alkynes. Very easily, all we're doing is we're adding the following reagents. We're adding k 4 H2O, NaOH, and H3O+. You don't need to know the mechanism. What's really simple is that all you're going to do is you're going to cut down the middle here, and you're going to insert. I think of it like this. Think of it as two steps. If you cut down the middle, you're going to form what? You're form H3CH, right, on both sides. On in blue, so you guys can. C H. H3, right? All you're going to do is now attach a C double bond O, bond o and then add an OH, carboxylic acid, from alkene. You're just splitting down the middle and you're separating. Okay? And then the same thing for this one here. Your double bond and O. Uh, this is ozonolysis. You've seen this one before. 
ozono. Using ozone to split an alkyne into carboxylic acids. Only carboxylic acids. Or you can use KMnO4, NaOH, H3O plus to form your carboxylic acids. The nature of these R groups over here can change. It doesn't matter what it is. You can have here, he's given it to you as CH3. Here it's CH2, CH3. You can have CH2, 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 Or CH3 here. Mix and match. All you need to do is you identify the double or triple bond, split it down the middle, add your C double bond O, add your OH. Uh, synthesis and reactions of acyl chlorides. Okay. Acyl chlorides. The first derivative that we want to look at looks like this. Yeah. Or acid chlorides. All right? I'm going to make sure people are not The great thing is that all you need to focus on are the following. You have one synthesis reaction, which is how do we make acyl chlorides, which is what I'm going to highlight. Can I highlight with this one? I'm going to highlight here in green. You have one synthesis reaction. The second pen. No, no there we no. go. This is the only synthesis reaction that you cover in this chapter, which is a, car which is a carboxyl acid to an acid chloride, an acyl chloride, using PCL5, PCL3, SOCl2. You've seen these before. Chapter 11. Chapter 12. Chapter 12. You've seen these in chapter 4. So again, the content is just repeating itself. Now, uh, it's a question of how well you remember the content and when you know and how well you know how to apply it when you go to solve questions. Okay? Every other reaction is straightforward. I'm not here to explain that. Okay. Um, the only thing that we need to focus on is there a mechanism one that I'm looking at here? No. The only mechanism one is the synthesis one, which is carboxylic acid two acyl chloride or acyl chloride using PCL5, PCL3, uh, or SOCl2. In this example, he uses SOCl2, and you've seen you've seen this mechanism before in chapter twelve. Chapter twelve. Very simple. I'm not going to draw over it again, but let's run through it. Step one, you have the lone pair of oxygen, the lone pair of uh, electrons on oxygen from carboxylic acid is going to do what? It's going to attack your reagent, SOCl2. When it does that, it breaks this pi bond. Okay? Once it breaks that pi bond, you basically join your OH group with your SOCl2 group which is what you see here. Now what's going to happen is the minus that you just formed on the oxygen from breaking those pi bonds, this long pair of electrons is going to build electrons, kick out Cl as Cl minus. Cl minus is now roaming around in solution. What is it going to do? It's going to come in and attack your carbonyl. Why your carbonyl? Because look at the final product. We want to have Cl attached here. And we want to get rid of the OH. So how have we gotten rid of the OH? Using this big group over here to just rip it out. Okay. When the CL minus comes in, it causes the CO bond to break. Technically, if you want to be slow and boring, you can break these electrons, then draw the structure again, and then show the pi bond reforming, which kicks out this group. Too many steps. And you form your acyl chloride, or in this case, benzoyl chloride. Side note, you're going to have a product that breaks down uh, to give you HCl and SO2, which is uh, this group right here. I don't know how to name this group, but I don't think he'll ask you to, to name it either. Just remember that there is a side product that breaks down. Uh, I'm trying to think here. You could, again, for this step here, do it in one step, uh, which is once the lone pair of electrons attacks the sulfur, you can just have this the, what is it, the chlorine leave. Because remember, what's the purpose of this step? To kick out chlorine. You guys see where I'm getting at? The purpose of this step is to kick out chlorine. 
If the purpose of this step is to kick out chlorine, then you can do it in one step without breaking the S double bond O. Much like in this step, the purpose is to kick out this entire group. And you don't have to show the C double bond O, you know, the, the pi bonds breaking and the electrons, colla uh, electrons collapsing towards oxygen. And then the next step, the electrons reforming. Does, did anything I say make sense? It, is that where you were looking at the ceiling? You guys cannot lie to me. Okay. So we can do it in one step? Yes, you can do it in one step. But why didn't he do that? All right. This is a practice question. You can do this in your own time. It's just fill in the blanks. It's like uh, it's just printing out the reaction sheets, uh, the slides that we covered, so slide 10, 11, and so on and so forth. And just looking, you're like, okay, where do I have CH3? And where do I have a uh, CO, uh, carboxylic acid forming? So COOH forming. And then you just simply uh, add the reagents. Let's see if you guys can remember this. Where, what is this? What is this group? This is basically what? It's an R group. So how can we go from an R group to a carboxylic acid? It's just one reagent. One. And it repeats itself. It's KMNO4, OH minus, heat, H3O plus. This. R group to uh, carboxylic acid. Uh, again, reactions repeating themselves. This is all, everything on this slide is basically chapter 12. And this right here is chapter, what's the last chapter you guys took? 16B? This is 16A. Uh, yeah, this is, this is the reduction of your acyl chlorides. So acid or acyl chlorides. Acyl chlorides. Uh, you can convert them to your primary alcohols. You can convert them uh, into aldehydes using sodium borohydride water. Uh, no, sorry, you can convert uh, your acid chloride to an aldehyde using uh, LTBA, so lithium tertiary, lithium tri tertiary butoxy. Uh, and you can convert your aldehyde into a primary alcohol. Yeah, I'm speed running content because uh, you guys didn't have any questions. So if you have any questions, go ahead and ask. Otherwise, try to get through content as quickly as uh, as we can. This next mechanism is converting an alcohol, uh, a carboxylic acid, into an ester. This is a very important reaction in organic chemistry called Fischer esterification. Fischer esterification. Putting a carboxylic acid to an ester using an alcohol which has the R group that you want because an ester is what? An ester, if you remember, esters look like this. Esters are R, they don't want O, O, R prime. So your R group, this R group is the R group that you're starting with. Then, the R prime group that you're attaching is going to be the alcohol that you use. That's it. Let's look at the mechanism. Uh, and if anything, if at any point um, I lose you guys, uh, you know what's crazy? I have a YouTube channel where I uploaded everything you need to know for chapter 16, A, B, 17, in a playlist. Yeah. It's almost like I've been sending these things on the WhatsApp group. I did. I, did. I, sent, I, I sent that one video that was like 23 minutes long. Uh, check oh, what's up. I, like, when I saw the link, I thought you just sent like a random video to like watch. Like, I I'm didn't heartbroken. Know you. Absolutely heartbroken. No, because I... <laughs> I'll check it. No, no, it's fine. But I, I do have a playlist. It's the one that I sent just now on WhatsApp. It's uh, 17, chapter 17. All of the mechanisms that you, you guys have to go through. Um, not all, most of the major mechanisms that you have to go through. So it's a helpful thing in case you miss it. I, I'm moving too quickly for you guys now. Um, yeah, so Fisher esterification. 
Uh, step one of fish certification involves, again, we're using H3O plus here, the acid. Your carbonyl on the carboxyl acid is going to get protonated. Once it gets protonated, protonated, we're here now. Once it gets protonated, you can have CH3OH, which is this thing, so R prime OH is one, come in with the lone pairs on the oxygen and attack the carbonyl. Once it attacks the carbonyl, you're going to have more than five bonds on carbon. Carbon can't have that. I electrons break off into uh, from C level one O H plus to C level one O uh, O H. Just this. Uh, then you're going to have an exchange of protons. Okay, you're going to have this group come in and take these protons, and the electrons collapse towards oxygen. Once that forms, you're going to want to kick out your O H two plus group. Just protonated. That's the whole point of it being protonated, is for us to kick it out. Then you end up with your basically ester, it's a protonated ester. How do we remove the protonated ester? We just produced water in solution, which was in this step. That's the water we're looking at. And water comes in, we'll remove the hydrogen, we get rid of your protonated ester. But being bada boom, you end up with your uh, from your carboxyl acid. Okay. Uh, this came in our example. Going from a delta hydroxy acid to a delta lactone. Um, again, this is another one that I have on the channel. This is basically a carboxylic acid. Then you have a few carbon chains later, denoted by alpha, beta, gamma, delta. And then on the delta carbon, you have an OH group, hence the name delta hydroxy OH acid, this group. Delta hydroxy acid. On the delta carbon, on the delta carbon, you have an OH group. And this at the other end of the molecule, you have a carboxylic acid. Basically, the whole principle of this is you're forming a ring. If you remember from the last if you remember from chapter 16, A or B, there's a question where you form a ring. Like it's a hemiacetal or cyclic hemiacetal. Same principle. All you have to do is you have to follow the flow of electrons. So this group here is attacking your carbonyl. When it does that, pause. Number one, number. Starting from the atom that directed the attack. You're going to number this one, one and you're going to move up until you end here to understand what your ring is going to look like. How many atoms is it going to have? Is it going to have five? Is it going to be six? Is it going to be seven? In this case, and almost a lot of the times, when uh, a lot of the questions that Dr. the professor will bring is six-member rings, because six-member rings are the most stable rings in organic chemistry. So let's do that. Number with me. This is one. This is two. This is three. This is four. This is five. And this is six. So when you go to draw your six-member ring, always start off by just doing drawing the six-member ring. Then assign the numbers. So I'm just going to pick a direction. Clockwise, counterclockwise, makes no difference to me. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I go back and I start filling in the blanks. At position one, what did I say I have? OH. So I'll put O, H, plus. At two, what do we have? We have an R group, R, great. At three, we have nothing. At four, we have nothing. At five, we have nothing. At six, what do we have? Well, we have our O minus and O H. This is our O H and this is O minus. If you're wondering how I got O minus, he shortens it in one step. But basically, what actually happens is the electrons break off here and then that minus attacks a proton, which in this case is H A. So, in reality, if you want to save yourself this, the trouble, it's just a, uh, it's OH. Okay, and that's exactly what's here. These two are the same. I'll just show you how to get there. Once you get here, one of these groups is going to remove, you have an OH plus group. You want to get rid of that. How? These lone pairs will attack this hydrogen. Once that happens, these electrons collapse towards here. When that happens, you're going to want to kick out the OH2, uh, OH2 plus group. How do you do that? By building these electrons, kicking out the OH2 plus group. 
When that happens, you're gonna have a protonated carbonyl. That protonated carbonyl can be deprotonated. How are we gonna deprotonate it? Well, we just produce water. Water is gonna come in, attack this hydrogen. These electrons collapse towards the carbonyl. Bada bing, bada boom. You have reformed your acid and you have formed your delta lacton, which is the structure that we're interested in. Okay. Not very difficult. The thing that's very important is that you have to keep track of uh, numbering the atoms. That's all. That's the thing that gets people tripped up most of the time. Uh, people online, questions? Very helpful. Thank you, Ali. I'm uh, emphasizing on the lacton formation class too. Good, good. All right. This is a practice question that demonstrates. Uh, Delta lacton formation from an alpha hydroxy acid. The only difference is that this R group has been replaced. That's it. Same way of solving it. Um, nitriles, synthesis and reactions. How do we make them? And what the hell do we do with them? Nitriles look like this. Remember. Um, this slide looks scary. Uh, it's not. It's few new reactions, so we can start with those, uh, but the rest repeat themselves, okay? Um, the first one, actually the only synthesis reaction, you have two synthesis reactions, which we'll highlight here. This reaction where you take an amide and you convert it to a nitrile, and this reaction, which isn't really new, which is an SN2 reaction, which you take an alkyl bromide or an alkyl halide, and you convert it to a nitrile using uh, NaCN or cyanide, sodium cyanide. cyanide. Uh, the rest repeat themselves. Again, you've seen all of these. You've seen dibalhexane. You've seen this from uh, chapter 16a. Uh, uh, this one here. This one here, where you use Rani nickel. You've seen Rani nickel before in chapter 16b when it was uh, looking at, when we looked at reducing uh, ionyl protecting groups. Remember those ionyl protecting groups that look like this? Ionyl protecting groups can use Rani nickel. Um, in this case, you're using Rani nickel in 140 degrees Celsius and H2 to convert a nitrile into. Uh, a primary amine. A practice question. Ah, yes. Hydrolysis of nitriles. This is a mechanism question. He may or may not bring this. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, the mechanism for this one is also also very fine, very straightforward. Uh, Let's do that. We're basically done with the chapter. So you have your nitrile uh, in the presence of H2O, H3O plus, and heat. These are probably the easiest reagents, uh, and they're the reagents that are in the natural reagent sheet, uh, reagent sheet. So what happens is your nitrile will begin by attacking the H3O plus solution, protonating itself. You form a protonated nitrile. The protonated nitrile exists in resonance. So remember, resonance is just the uh, delocalization of electrons. You're going to break the C triple bond N, and the electrons collapse towards nitrogen. What's going to happen is your H2O that you just produced in this step, it's a very uh, fun reaction because things repeat themselves over and over. H2O will come in and attack your, <coughs> will attack your uh, protonated nitrile at the carbon. When this happens, you're going to have the following structure. You're going to want to get rid of, because remember the goal is to go from what? A nitrile to a carboxylic acid. So you want to get rid of this extra hydrogen. How do you do that? Using H2O. H2O will come in, attack that hydrogen, removing it, deprotonating it, so you go from OH2 plus to OH. Once you have that, you form H3O plus. You form H3O plus. This basically forms H3O plus, which appears here. H3O plus is now subject to attack by. NH group, which has a lone pair of electrons. 
it will protonate itself, and now you form a protonated amide group, which once again exists in resonance. Once you're in resonance, uh, I don't know why he shows this last step. Uh, you can choose to ignore it because it def it'll make sense in a second. Once you have this protonated amide, we're going to scroll down here. This is a continuation of the mechanism. This is not a new reaction, just a heads up. Here. We end up here. You can basically ignore everything else. You can ignore this part. Once you have your protonated amide, what's going to happen is you're going to have another H2O molecule come in and attack your carbon. When that happens, you're going to have OH, which you have from up here, OH2+, plus, which you just added, and NH2. What is the group that we want to kick out? Well, it's the NH2 group. But NH2 on its own isn't a good leading group. We have to make it a good leading group. How are we going to make it a good leading group? By protonating it. How is it going to get protonated? Well, we have a proton that's readily, that's just like taking it on the OH2 plus group. That proton is transferred to the NH2 group, forming NH3+. Once NH3+, is formed, we can easily kick it out. How? By building C double bond home. By building C double bond home. Which forms our carboxylic acid. Which is basically, uh, well, forms our protonated carboxylic acid. Which means now we're just one step away. We just need to get rid of that H that is attached to our carboxylic acid. How do we do that? Well, we just kick up NH3, which has a lone pair of electrons, ready to attack this hydrogen, and uh, you form your carboxylic acid from your protonated uh, carbonyl. I know I, I breezed through that one very quickly, but uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. It's a again, review session. I wish I could take my sweet time with, this type, with, this type, uh, with these types of questions. My headache is gone, man. Wow, amazing. Yeah, chemistry just does that to you. Any questions? No. Slide. Oh, yeah. Did we get there? No, we're not there yet. That's a later one. I think you're talking about slide uh, 38. Yeah. Yeah, the HVZ reaction. We'll get there, we'll get there. Uh, uh, this looks at forming uh, anhydrides, cyclic anhydrides, specifically from carboxylic acids. Basically two carboxylic acids facing each other. If you heat them up together, you get rid of one OH group, you get rid of a hydrogen, and you just join them together form either phallic and hydride or succinic and hydride. Hi, buddy. Huh? Hi, buddy. Lemon Bowser, organic chemistry. Oh, hi, Lemon Bowser, organic chemistry. Oh, hi, Lemon Bowser, organic chemistry. Yeah, so we just heat those up. I don't know if he told you guys anything about this. Anyways, uh, step before this to get to here just involves heating phallic acid, OH, 300 degrees Celsius, 230. 230 degrees Celsius, this is the full. So, phallic, uh, phallic acid. So the phallic and hydride using heat. And now, this is how to go from phallic and hydride to thalamine. Imides, the functional group for imides looks like this, people. Um, imides look like R, C double bond O, N, R, O, R. Imides, that's the functional group for imides. Where in this case, R, this R here, let's call this R prime, R double prime, and all triple prime. R triple prime is what? H, R prime, R double prime form the rest of the ring. Okay? Um, how, do we get, how do we get here from thalamic and hydroid? So step one is to add two molar equivalents of NH3, H2O, and warm the solution. When that happens, you form ammonium thalamate. How and why? Uh, I have no idea because your professor doesn't expect it. So there's nothing to worry about there. You can make your own mental map of... Uh, of what we're replacing for. 
then what we're going to do is with an, uh, with our ammonium thalamate, we're going to add H3O+. Plus. What that does is that gets gets rid of this NH4 and replaces it with what? Then what we can do is we can heat this thal th uh, thalamic acid at 150 degrees Celsius or 160 degrees Celsius, and we form thalamine, which gets rid of that OH group, and you form your thalamine, or thalamine functional group. <clears throat> Questions? Keep all mine. Do we have to memorize the degree of the heat? Um, I think if you get the range right, you should be fine. Uh, but if, for example, if the reaction calls for 150 degrees Celsius and you're like four, that's you're off entirely. Do you memorize I don't think you have to memorize the specific values, but since they're so remember this chapter is so each each thing we've covered so far is seems a bit on its own and isolated. For example, the slide that uh, was at the your friend is referring to is this one. Uh, phthalic acid, 230, phthalic anhydride. Do you need to know this, 230 degrees Celsius? If the professor said so, by all means, ignore what I just said. Uh, otherwise, if you just say 200, 230, or you give a range. If you're in the middle of the exam and you forget, just give a range. Don't be like 0 to 600 degrees Celsius. That's not a good range. Uh, just say you know, 190 to 220, just a, a range like that. This question. Yes. H3Z. Hell Volhard Zelinsky reaction. Huh? No. Uh, this reaction basically uh, involves is one of the, the very nice reactions that allows us to produce amino acids. So using a carboxylic acid or an alpha carboxylic acid because it's actually the alpha carbon and Cl2 and P, so chlorine and phosphorus, then in the presence of water, we form an alpha chloral acid. We add a chlorine where? At the alpha position. We just get rid of one of these hydrogens and we add a Cl. Once the Cl is there, that's really important when it comes to synthesizing many, many downstream uh, products. The mechanism, and this is I think the question that uh, I was asking about, is how the hell does P react with Cl2 to form PCl3? Genuine answer, I have no idea. Because he never explained it to us. And I don't think I don't think you need to know. I don't think you need to know that that, uh, that reaction. Um, once you form PCl3, we've seen PCl3 before. We have seen PCl3 before. We've seen PCl5 with it, and we've seen SOCl2 with it. So let's see if anyone was paying attention today. Where have we seen PCL3, PCL5, and SOCl2? In the same, over the same era. It's converting what to what? Hint, just look at this. Just look. What? Yes. What were you going to say? You were going to say something. Yeah, I was going to say alcohol too. Two? Two? To like a... Something halide. Close, close. It's a carboxylic acid to an acid halide or an acyl chloride. Uh, basically, the carboxylic acid remains the same with the exception of you're removing the OH and you're adding the CL. Then you're going to have this structure over here, this thing over here, exist in resonance, forming enol. Remember, keto enol, chapter 16A, 16B. This stuff still will haunt you between now until your final exam. So you have keto enol tautomerization. Basically, a fancy way of saying you build C double bond C. Double bond C. Okay. Uh, once that happens, you're going to have OH build a double bond. Once it builds a double bond, it'll force that electron density from C double bond C out and it will attack. Cl2 gas that's in solution, or that's present in the reaction. Cl2 is now, uh, Cl, one Cl is added here to your alpha carbon, okay? 
Once it's added, you can now add H2O, and when you add H2O, you get rid of the acyl chloride and you form your carboxyl acid. With that, you have formed your alpha chloro acid. With your alpha chloro acid, you can now proceed and add two reagents, one NaOH and then H2O, which will produce an alpha hydroxy acid, which involves replacing the chlorine at the alpha position with a hydroxyl group. Or you can add two NH3, polar equivalents of NH3, and replace the alpha chloro, the alpha chlorine, with NH3 uh, at the alpha position, and you basically form your alpha amino acid. Uh, how do we do it for time? Okay. Mission. Not be able to finish everything, but let's uh, we can basically end here. This is the decarboxylation of beta keto acid, which is a fancy, long, convoluted chemist way of saying uh, using CO2 from a beta keto acid. Beta keto acid is what you have your keto ketone, C the one, oh, this is your ketone at the beta carbon your carboxylic acid at the alpha carbon. What's going to happen? Very, very simple. You're going to have, I don't know, pick an arrow and label it number one. Just pick an arrow and label it number one. We're going to have the C double bond O from the beta ketone come in and take this hydrogen. We'll call this one one. What that does is that causes the electron between the O and the H to collapse here forming a double bond, so that's step two. Step three is then breaking this CC bond, this bond here. I'll probably do a different color. We've been using green for a while. This, this bond right here, CC. When that happens, you basically have formed CO2, which would be here. Like, look, imagine. This is CO2. This leaves as CO2 gas. Then you built a double bond. You built it, like, I'm going to redraw this part here. You have R, you have C. We said we built a double bond down here. Great. And then up here, what did we say we added? We added an OH. So, OH. And then this is a CH2. And this is exactly what we see here. You basically formed an enol. How? Using a beta keto acid, you've eliminated CO2. With the enol, from your last chapter, you know that enols are not as stable as their keto form. So your product will be primarily in its ketone form. That's it. So enol tautomerization. Uh, this is uh, another practice question. We got like five minutes. Let's do this one. This. I'm gonna redraw it. Looks like this. Match the format we just saw. Color here. So C O O H. So the steps that we said are as follows. Your double bond comes in, acts this hydrogen. Once you take that hydrogen, these electrons fall towards the C bonded to O. That will cause these electrons to fall this way. You're drawing our structure, it'll look like this. H. No. And this is your ketone. All about drawing, it's just all about redrawing things in a way that looks familiar and is easy for you to uh, to recognize when solving questions. Online, any questions? Is it okay if we go over drawing the stable structure of an amino acid or will be in the midterm? Okay. Yes. Like what? Like how would the question just draw an amino acid? Like how 
I'm, I'm not even fist. <laughs> Yeah, you're a bio major, you should know how to draw. Okay, Lee I Lee know, Lee. but like, what does he mean? Like, just draw it, like, that's it? Or no, no, draw, I, like, I don't know what Ali means. means. Let, let's ask her, let's see. Like, what does he mean? Uh, Ali, do you know what he meant by draw the most stable uh, amino acid? Like, what? Okay, he said to concentrate on people, so know how to draw it and know the reactions that make it, which is only one, the HVZ okay. reaction. Yeah. So the hell of all hair I can't, I can't be bothered to always pronounce it. So, yeah. We're also going to do 47 because someone requested that. 47, we'll just jump into that. Good. What about 47? To know the mechanism. Uh, no, you don't, but the mechanism is uh, quite simple. The mechanism is actually simple. I just need to find space to draw it. Um, so, or up here, actually. What you have is you have the following you have phenyl iso, excuse me, phenyl isocyanate and ROH, and you're basically forming urethane or carbamate. You're interested really in this functional group. So let's go ahead and draw the mechanism for this. It looks like this. You have your R O H with its lone pairs. And you're going to have your phenyl isocyanate. Uh, how do I write it? Right? There we go. What's going to happen is the lone pairs on the OH are going to come in and attack your carbon. When that happens, you're going to have electrons break onto nitrogen. Drawing our next step looks Why like... Why don't the electrons break on oxygen? I'll get there. I'll get you. Well, it's resonance. I'll show you what the resonance structure looks like. Uh, but just a second. So... Yeah, yeah, no, this is cool. N, C, O, O, R, H, minus. Okay, and of course there's a plus. The next step is deprotonation of the group that has the O, H, uh, the O, R, H, right? So this group up here, let's highlight. No. Yeah, the highlight up here. So the N minus will come in and attack this hydrogen. Once that happens, you're going to have the lone pairs with the electrons break onto the oxygen. Redrawing everything, it'll look like this. N H of one O. Which is exactly this group. You have your NH, NH, C double one O, C double one O, O R bonded to C, O R bonded to C. The reason you don't have, um, to have a good question, the reason you don't have the electrons breaking onto oxygen is one, because resonance, the electrons are always shifting between the oxygen, between the carbon, and between the nitrogen. And it's just that from a stability perspective, from energy, energetic perspective, it's much more favorable for nitrogen to have the, uh, to, to, to be broken, to have that hydrogen, to have the hydrogen attached to it versus OH. You may have some structures temporarily on a nanosecond scale where you have the OH protein, but very quickly the minus on the nitrogen comes in and snatches it. And then the same thing for the methyl isocyanate and the one naphthol. You have your uh, your urethane carbamate group up there. Does that make sense? Uh, 
Perfect. Okay, that wraps up my time. My voice is gone. Um, questions? Concerns? I know, I, I hope I didn't lose a few of you guys. Um, be boring like that, so. Take this. I'll send this to you guys if anyone wants this. No, the, the actual document that I just worked on. Oh yeah, can you send it to me? Anyone else want it? 